Pad, not paw. Mask, not head. Brush, not tail. Pad, mask, brush. Oh, there you are. Tea? No. James has been trying to teach me the language. You know, nothing has tails. Foxes have brushes, and hounds have Stern. sterns, like ships. And they're never called dogs. And a crop isn't a crop, it's a whip. And as for horses... <laughs> The nearer this weekend gets at Summerby, the more I dread it. I know exactly how you feel. I can still vividly remember the first time I went to stay at Southwold. I made little lists for weeks. If, it hadn't, if I hadn't been engaged for Marjorie, I think I'd have funked it. But you were different. Well, you've been to a smart school and Oxford. You were used to it. Oh, you'd be surprised how naive I was. After all, I was the son of a poor country parson. Quite successful scholastically, I admit. But then Greek doesn't go down very well in a billiard room. Furthermore... I had committed the appalling impertinence of asking the eldest daughter of an earl to marry me. But you knew everything they did. Their habits. Not a bit. I couldn't play bridge. I rode like a sack of potatoes. When we went shooting, I could feel old Walter Southwold's beady little eyes, counting every bird I missed. And my man in London hadn't put in a white whiskered. Oh, but things are quite different now. It'd be great fun. Anyway, the, the Newburys are very easy, and you know them, don't you? We've dined with them once, in London. I like Bunny. I wasn't too sure about his wife. Diana? Oh, she's all right. James and Diana have known each other for years. They were practically brought up together. In fact, Marjorie thought at one time... I mean, um, we thought... What a suitable wife she would have made for your son. Oh, no, no, not exactly that. She was so overwhelmingly friendly, I nearly suffocated. Oh. I'm sure I shall make the most ghastly faux pas, and, and James will be dreadfully shamed. Now you just be yourself. I don't even know what to wear. Is it tiaras or turbans at dinner? <laughs> You'll need a maid. Yes, I know. The thought of a strange woman doing my hair horrifies me. Take Rose. She always used to look after Elizabeth. She knows all about it. Hudson would have a fit. Oh, no, no, nonsense. We've got that temporary girl and the cleaning women. I think we'll just about survive a weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard. I'm being a bore. I think you'll be a great success. Oh, hello, Father. Hello, yeah. darling. Let's try it on my new britches. Man says they're the best pair he's made this year. Oh, darling, how clever. Hmm? Or rather extravagant, but devilish smart. All those Meltonians. Hazel was just saying how much she's looking forward to going. Hmm? Oh, yes, it'll be great fun. App brush. Yes. Little bit pad. Yep. Gloves. Yep. Two pairs spurs, complete with straps. Yeah, what a why he wants two pairs, Rose. One blunt, one sharp, depending on yours. How do you fancy these pressed into your tender flanks, Rose? Boot pulls. Yep. Boot jockeys. Uh, yep. Hunting whip. Mm-hmm. Top hat. That's it. Boots, and that's all. Now, remember, Edward, when we're there, I am Miss Buck and you are Mr. Bowens. Yes, ma'am. Hey, well, I have to help wait and all that. You will not demean yourself by such a thing. You're Captain Bellamy's man, and as such, you will not lift a finger to touch nothing that isn't his. Now, like as not, we'll be asked to take our meals in the steward's room. You'll probably be asked to take in somebody else's mail. Oh, I hope she's a good looker. None of that, Edward. There's temptations in them big houses. Hey, well, that's what I thought weekends in the country were for, Rose. You know, a little bit of what you fancy, eh? Oh, oh I beg pardon, Miss Buck. I can see I've offended your delicate sensibility. <laughs> Come on, Rose, we're off.
look at those bells, Rose. Look, Lord Charles Gilmore, the Oriel Room. Captain and Mrs. Bellamy, the Green Silk Room. The Honourable Mrs. Tewksby, the Pink Room. Maid Room, Mrs. Cochrane Danby, the Oriel Room. Would you be the Bellamy's? Um, how do you do, Mr. Makepeace? Mr. Hudson sent his kind regards. Mr. Breeze, Lord Newbury's man. Mr. Makepeace is unfortunately indisposed. Well, that's one way of putting it. Ah, oh, Cecile. Uh, the Bellamy's, Mademoiselle Lambert, her ladyship's maid. Um, Miss Buck, Mr. Barnes. Oh, yes. You are in the green silk room, and we wish you to have a very nice stay. Footman. Henry. Oh. Come. That way. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And now, Miss Bock, may I show you your room? Thanking you, Mr. Breeze. Not at all, Miss Bock. Well, I said to him, he should have known, staying at Sandringham, trousers are pressed to the sides. He doesn't know the first thing, that man, and that sort never learn. Uh, yeah, you can't teach an old dog. That's right, Mr. Breeze. He didn't even bring Windsor livery. Um, <clears throat> I, I think I'll, I'll go out and unpack now, Mr. Breeze. First floor, you'll see the card on the door. Thank you. Nice looking boy. Nice fresh complexion. Well, if I don't have him, Cecile will. She was awfully cross, and he didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There you are. Jimmy. Oh, oh, Diana. Diana. I'm sorry, the train was late. Mm. Come hey, over and get warm and have some tea. Thank you, Frank. James, I think you know everybody. Uh, Kitty, Natalie, Charles, hello, Cocky. Oh. Hazel, I don't think you've met Mrs. Tewksbury. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Cochrane Danby. How do you do? We've all heard so much about you. <laughs> Lord Charles Gilmore. We've met, I, I think, briefly with your father-in-law at the House of Commons. Oh, yes. And Major Cochrane Danby. I say, how do you do? Jolly nice to meet you. I didn't have a party. I thought Hazel would rather have a quiet weekend after all the hurly-burly of London. Thank you. Do sit down. Barney will get you some tea. Huh? Oh, yeah. Huh. Tell me, what sort of day do you have? Oh, uh, pretty middling. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bunny, it was great fun. <laughs> Frank said it was the best Friday the corn have had this season. Bunny got left, as usual, and missed the hunt. That was a fox in Carrington. That wasn't Carrington's, that was Cream Goss. We left oh. Ashby Pastures on our right and went round Great Dorby. Charles jumped the biggest oxer you've ever oh. seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good horse I bought from the Yellowman. That's my pickle stock. I didn't think he ever got over it. I never saw him again. <laughs> oh, oh, Pickles hung up his boots years ago. Mm. Poor old chap, he's rather pathetic. Very bobbery. He's lost his nerve. Doesn't go yard. Too much of this. <laughs> <laughs> Angela had a horrible fall. Did that big ditch him? above yeah. Gartree Hill. Yes. Riding one of Rib's nice young horses. She's quite mad, of course. A four-year-old, green as hell, straight off the bog. There was a lot of grief. Loose horses everywhere. Mm. There's one poor fellow lying for dead on the road near Moscow Farm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know who he was. He was on a sort of common grey. A visitor. Yeah. A little man of absolutely no account. He had a diamond horseshoe <laughs> on his stock pin. Now, I saw oh, it at God. the meet. Quite horribly, no. <laughs> James, hmm? James, come with me to the stables, eh? Oh, right. Who was that half-witted girl who cut in on Algy at that fence by Borough Hill Wood? Rather pretty girl. Frank says he doesn't know half the people hunting with the Gorm this season. In Lordy's day, she'd have been sent smartly home. Perfect. Menace. Why the Wilsons let Lexi come out riding astride in that sort of coachman's coat, I'll never know. You're all jealous. She goes so well. Do you hunt, Mrs. Bellamy? No. That was a jolly nice little But I've ridden a bit in London. I'd say, what fun. That was Miss Patkin, the horse Nothing more boring than other people's hunting stories. Except their children and other ailments. Oh, I'm rather enjoying it. I've never heard so many nice people I didn't know talk about so many nice horses I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's no, jolly funny. I must remember that. <laughs> I bet you look damned handsome on a horse. Well, I... No, I, I, mean, I mean it. Do you live up here, Major Danby? Oh, God, no. No one actually lives up here. 
just come up to Leicester, to, don't you know, for the hunting. You mean you all come up here just to hunt foxes? No, dear lady, not just to hunt the foxes. Hazel, if Cocky can spare you, come up and let me show you your room. Mine's taking James off to see if the horses are back yet. What a sweet little hat. Thank you. Mm. Well. Not bad looking in a farouche sort of way. It's really quite presentable. If only she wouldn't open her mouth. Damned attractive girl, huh? Girl? Well, she's still only a bride. She's as old as I am, if she's a day. And Harry's your third husband, isn't he, darling? I mean, quite apart from one or two who got under the wire. <laughs> she's jealous. <laughs> it's quite obvious, if you've read your Freud, that dear James has got a mother fixation. When he lost his mother, he had to find a replacement. Love, voila. <laughs> dear Charles, when you start being intelligent, I never understand one word you say. Let's all go and have lovely lie downs. Mm. Charles. Well, Mr. Breeze, I see we've got a whole lot of odds and ends here again this weekend. Yes, indeed, Mr. Gilmore. I really don't know why his lordship asks some of them. Thought has asked themselves, aren't they? Uh, excuse me, but if you're referring to my master and his wife... Mr. Gilmore was referring to Major and Mrs. Danby, I fancy who, as you might say, are on the fringe of society, not having personal servants of their own. Black ties tonight, gentlemen, if you please. Lord Charles is up here for the hunting, I suppose, Mr Gilmore. Lord Charles hunts in Leicestershire, always has done, as everyone knows. But I wouldn't exactly say that is why we are visiting Somerville. We are, for our sins, susceptible to the ladies. And the present object of our affections has a husband who isn't exactly enthusiastic. Well, rather the opposite, if you get my meaning. That is why we are here in this drafty old barracks, miles away from anywhere. Oh, I see. Lord Charles has some nice things. Yes. We have some even nicer things upstairs. He was to allow me to show them to you sometime. Oh, I'd like that, Mr. Gilmore. <clears throat> you are uh, finding everything to your liking? Oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, yes, thank you, um, Miss. Mademoiselle Ed Cecile. Uh, Ed Edward. You are a nice looking boy, Edward. Young for a valet de chambre. Not like some of them, you know. <laughs> no, no, not likely. You are uh, sleeping down here? Uh, yes, um, j just along the corridor. By yourself? Oh, yes. I mean, I hope so. I hope not. <laughs> now you are blushing. is out of the bath and waiting. Um, sorry, Rose, I I'm new to this job. Yeah. Oh, um, if you'll excuse me mentioning it, madam. Yes, Rose. Well, Lady Marjorie always used to say, no diamonds in the country. Thank you, Rose. Except if it's for a big formal party, or a bowl, of course. These? Most appropriate. Thank you, Rose. You look very beautiful tonight, my darling. Very proud of you. Thank you, Rose.
if you will excuse my mentioning it, madam, but no diamonds in the country. Have you tidied away Captain James' clothes? Yes, Rose. Put out his night things? No, Rose. Well, then go and do it now. Cocky, aren't you ready yet? Bravo! Bravo. Bravo. First syllable. How many are there? Oh, that would be jelly. He's a piggy wing. No, a wild boar. Oh, he's too fierce for a pig. A boar, of course. Cocky doesn't even need to act that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, second, second, second syllable. he's meant to be doing. Lover. Caveman. Hazel, my dear, what a life you must lead at home. Lady Newbury's room. It means I shall be waiting for you. Um, <clears throat> third and last syllable. <laughs> <laughs> Not there. Tiger, a lion. Androcles and the lion. <laughs> well, that was Androcles, a caveman. No, he was a Christian slave. Now, what about the boar? Oh, a boar, by sure. Haven't you seen a dreadful play? The lion was the only lucky one not to have a speaking part. <laughs> uh, and now the, the whole word. Oh. I've got it. Boar de Leon. Borderline. Wrong. No, 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 no. No. I say, Dan, aren't you going too far? Uh, it's all right. We're all friends. Uh, I'll ah. keep the chair. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, have okay. you started? Uh, have you started now? Diana the Huntress. Leonardo, Leon the Lion. I say. Oh, my dear, this is becoming very real gauche. Wasn't there a king or someone who once worshipped a statue? My das. Cocky, come on. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, do you think that this has been passed by the Lord Chamberlain? I know. It's a king of Cyprus. It's sure again. It's Pig... Pig Malia! Yes. <laughs> I don't see that. It's all so muddling. Pig male lion, Natalie dear. Pig Malia. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Very good. Very good. Oh, Bunny, you've just 
miss your wife practically seducing James in public. <laughs> Won't be the first time. Or the last. <laughs> now, uh, hunting tomorrow, they're meeting here. Uh, James, Sam Hames is bringing a horse across for you and he swears it can jump. Oh, now, right. what about Hazel? No, Hazel doesn't hunt. You ride, don't you, Hazel? I'm sure she'd love to. We won't be messing about in the wood all morning. No jumping or anything. Hazel could have that old mare of your mother's. Oh, yes, uh, Blueberry, and that she's as quiet as a I'm mare. sorry, Hazel isn't going to hunt. The voice of the master. Let's all have a drink. Um, uh, James, uh, game of billet. Yes. Ah. Uh, drinks, then? Well, I think I'm for bye-byes. Good night, Natalie, darling. Good night, my dear. I'm really rather weary. I hope she isn't too weary. <laughs> James is really turning into a caveman. I hope you have strong hair, Hazel, dear. I think it's jolly bad luck if Hazel does want to hunt. I wouldn't stand for my husband ordering me about like that. We know that, darling. <laughs> if you would like to hunt, you jolly well hunt. Well, it's no good forcing her to do something she doesn't want to do. James doesn't want me to do. Don't you let James rot you. He's getting very bossy and it's time he was taught a lesson. I haven't any proper clothes. Enough clothes in this house to equip a female squadron of yeomanry. Why don't you wait till they've moved off? Then come out later. You can have a groom to bring you out. Oh, I would adore to see James's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd be rather fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, it would be rather fun. <laughs> <laughs> I say, what a lark. <laughs> the mistress doesn't hunt, Rose. I think she'd look nice. Mm, I'm sure she would. Still, I suppose she's not been brought up to it. I mean, not like the other ladies. Hey, talk 
talking about the ladies, Rose. Do you know what I've just seen in the orangery? No, and I don't want to, neither. Up it, Edward. Get on with your work. David, what's happening, Rose? You go away. We don't want you. Yeah, but now look. Some men are never in the right place when they are wanted. Are they, Rose? Push off. Oh, come on, Rose. What's out? <sighs> Thank you, Rose. Thank you. There you are. That looks a nice, confidential animal. They found a fox. We should have some fun. Off you go. Good luck. A good looking woman on the dark grey. Never seen her before in my life.
I hope that will teach you a lesson that you will never forget. Will you please see my wife home safely? James. James, is, is Hazel all right? Yes. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm awfully sorry about this. I think I'd better apologise to the master for my wife's behaviour. Hazel. Yes, my dear. Oh, I made such a fool of myself. Doesn't sound to me as if it did. Very nasty thing to be run away with. Comes to us all. But uh, jumping the avenue gate and staying on, and then pulling the brute up, it's a damn fine thing. I think you're a very plucky girl. You're very kind. I couldn't help it. Nonsense. Not many women hunting in Leicestershire could do a thing like that. Go on. Yeah. Mick says she was galloping along, jumping gates like they were hurdles. None of the gentlemen could catch her. Be nothing like it since Lady Warwick was up here. The summer's life's thrown off. That's a very good joke coming from you. You should have seen your Lord Charles and that woman in the smoking room after luncheon. Who were you with last night? <laughs> but I, I don't think Captain James would like it. Oh, he ought to be proud of her. Well, he was livid, wasn't he? Wasn't that what the groom said? They always have a big row when they come back from hunting. That's what they like. Then they make a love. For dinner? Yes, and after. Often. Cecile? Just like a bunch of children. Children? I'm off. Much cosier in here, madam. The bathrooms in this place are that big and draughty. Did you enjoy the hunting, madam? Yes, thank you, Liz. Downstairs, they were saying, they haven't seen nothing like it. Not since Lady Warwick was up here. Really? The way James behaved was too ridiculous. Going off into a sulk like a spoiled child. No harm came to his precious wife. Yes, but it could have been very nasty, though. Tell me, why wasn't Hazel riding Mother's old mare? I thought that was the idea. She was lame, so I let Hazel ride the new horse I bought in Ireland. Thank you, Cecile. Look, the one you can hardly stop yourself, even in a gag. Look, she might have fallen off. I, I do think that's a, a bit hard. She shouldn't have said she could ride if she couldn't. And <laughs> then she wouldn't have made such a fool of herself. Anyway, you try falling off side saddle, darling. Don't be a bore. I say, what a business. Is, uh, is Hazel all right? Oh, yes. I, uh, I looked after her. <laughs> I'm sure you did, Cocky, dear. Held her hand and told her what a brave little woman she was. <laughs> So let's forget all about it and have our tea. Well? Well? Did you have a nice hunt? I take it from all the sniggering that's going on behind my back. Your little exhibition was supposed to be some sort of a joke. Hmm? Well, if so, I hope you enjoyed it. One thing is quite sure. Everyone around here will be laughing their heads off about it for the rest of the winter. James, I'm sorry. 
Now please go away and, and leave me alone. Oh, I certainly shan't go until I've had some explanation of why you deliberately disobeyed me. I thought I made myself perfectly clear. Well, it wasn't really my idea in the first don't, place. Don't, don't try I... and blame it on other people. You knew very well... Don't go on about it! Eol said that you were getting arrogant and stuffy and that you needed teaching a lesson. Well, my God, they were right. Hmm? Oh, so, so, so you agreed to collaborate? Hmm? Oh, oh, that was very loyal of you. I was only trying to do what you've been telling me to do week after week. Hmm? To get on with your silly friends. Oh, so they may be silly, but they know how to ride, which is more than you can do, so stop boasting about it. Some people thought I did rather well. <laughs> so cocky, I suppose. Yes? Yes, well, what the hell does he know about it? The master said to see if I could interest my wife in paper chasing in future. Stop looking like a cross old sheep dog. You were behind all this, weren't you? Me? You're a very wicked girl. Darling James, you've known that for years. Haven't you? Hello. Hello. My uh, dressing room door was open, so I. Uh, I say, you do look beautiful. Major Danby, do you usually come into a lady's bedroom without an invitation? Didn't I read an invitation in your eyes? My dear lady is sad. I'm quite all right, thank you. What's the matter? You can tell me. Let me. Wipe the tears from those pretty eyes. It's that husband of yours, isn't it? Well, there'd be the most terrible row if he came in now and saw you but here. He won't, my dear, will he? Otherwise engaged, what? Doing what? Now you're teasing me. But you must be upset. It's, it's not serious. It's only games. Games? Bit games. He's been playing bed games with Diana for years. Everybody does it. Such fun, you know. And country house weekends would be pretty dull if everybody didn't, you know. I say, you have the most absolutely stunning shoulders. Uh, well, what about a little bed game of our own, eh? What a lovely bouncy bed. It's much softer than mine. Play it down. I think it would be so much better if, if you went back to your room and... Why, well, I say, I mean you were... Huh. As soon as you're free, three knocks. Come in. Madam. Rose. We are going back to London. What, tonight? Yes, now. Immediately. Already, Rose? Madam. I ought to give this to Captain James. But not for half hour. Got it? That's right. Oh, I just know the first thing, that man. I said to him, send his grace out with a Cotsmore, wearing a black coat. It's enough to make Lord Lonsdale take the arms home. Mr. Strawbridge is master of the Cotsmore. 
Well, at the time I'm speaking of, it was Lord Lonsdale. Is that a car? I, uh, I think it's Mrs. Cochrane Danby back. Well, I'll get here. Been sharpening her claws on Daisy Pless over at Baggrave. Corn kitten got small cat. And I wouldn't mind betting Major Cocky's been sniffing round your lady, Edward. Really? What's up with you, Eddie? Have you seen the summer big ghost? <laughs> no. The sight of them chops, I wouldn't wonder. <laughs> Let's have your brown paper, lad. Yeah, let me show you. I think Diana sometimes goes a bit too far. Huh? Switching horses like that and putting your wife on an animal that pulls like a train. Yes. Jealous, of course. Your game. Time for another? Yeah, there's the second dressing gong, we Morton. Uh. Oh, for me? So, have your revenge after dinner. Who gave you this? Your man, sir. Uh, will you ask him to wait a moment, please? Certainly, sir. Anything wrong? Uh, no, it's just that I seem particularly prone to practical jokes this weekend. Hello, James. Did you have a good day? Not me. How's Hazel? Why do you ask? <laughs> I don't know. I just wondered. Did you know Mrs. Bellamy had left? Yes, sir. How long ago was it? About half an hour ago, sir. They, they were going to catch at 7.20, sir. Well, why didn't you tell me before? I was told not to, sir. By whom? By Rose, sir. On behalf of the mistress, of course. Did you put Mrs. Bellamy before me? Well, no, sir. Of course not, sir. But, well, Rose said... Well, Mr. Hudson said I've got to do as Rose says while we was away. You, you have no idea why she left? No, sir. Rose didn't tell you? No, sir. Mrs. Bellamy did seem a bit upset, sir, but, well, she just asked me to telephone to the station up for a cab and, and well, then she gave me that letter as they left. I see. Uh, excuse me, sir. Hmm? There's no connection now. The exchange closed at seven. Well, there's a train at 8.50. We'll catch you. Pack everything ready. Yes, sir. Drama. I wish I hadn't missed it all. <laughs> I thought Hazel Bellamy came off best. I thought she was uh, damn plucky. And now Bunny is furious with Diana, and James is livid with Hazel. Oh. <laughs> I say, have you heard the latest? Hazel Bellamy's bolted. Bolted? Not again. Not twice in one day. But how, darling? She's just upped sticks and dashed off to London without telling anyone. But why on earth? Well, she must have gone quite a hurry. Why don't we ever go to have dinner? I'm famished. Well, even though the cooking in this house leaves. Shh. It's like a play by Pinero. Whatever next? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if there's anything we can do, James, now do let us know. I don't suppose any of you can cast any light on the mysterious departure of Hazel Bellamy. Oh, dear Bunny, you sound just like S. Holmes, Esquire. <laughs> well, it is damn upsetting. I mean, James has gone off in a, in a hell of a state. Apparently, somebody was in her room talking to her after tea. Probably her maid. A man's voice, according to my maid. Well, I was in here playing backgammon with James. Well, don't all look at me. You forgot to lock your dressing room door. Cocky, you dirty old stoat at it again. I never touched her, Kitty, darling. I, I, I swear it. I just went in to see if she was all right, you know, after the shock. Cocky, dear, the shock of seeing you in one's bedroom, bearing down on one at full steam ahead, is enough to make anyone run away to London. <laughs> Natalie, you are speaking of my husband. <clears throat> I'd like a word with you after dinner. Don't be pompous, Bunny. Cocky can't help it. Dinner is served, my lady. Thank you. Well, thanks to La Bellamy, this is turning out to be quite a jolly weekend.
They were quite funny, really. Like a lot of grown-up children playing with fire. They lead empty, pointless lives, so they have silly games to keep themselves from dying of boredom. What is quite unforgivable is James's behaviour. Everyone up there seemed to think it was considered just another game. I suppose I was silly to run away, but I was so desperately hurt, Richard. Yes, yes, I know. How they'll all be laughing about it now. I've never heard of anything so cruel and thoughtless that a son of mine could... I don't think I can face him, Richard. He won't come tonight. When he does show his face again, you just leave him to me. James? I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to Hazel alone, please, Father. I think Hazel would prefer that I stayed, so that you can explain your behaviour to both of us. My behaviour? What made you bolt like that? Can't you think of one good reason? No, I can't. I've been trying to for the last three hours. Why didn't you tell me you wanted to leave? For once, I don't think your darling Diana would have been very amused if I'd walked into her bedroom and asked to be allowed to talk to my husband. First, let me say that I have never been in Diana Newbury's bed, either before or after her marriage. Second, let me say that after tea, I never for one minute left the hall. I played backgammon with Charles Gilmore, and until the man brought your note, the only movement I made was to get myself a drink. Uh, Father Charles Gilmore is a friend of yours. You, you can confirm it. Now, who told you this nonsense? Major Dunby. Cocky. <laughs> should be shot. James. I suppose he pussyfooted his way into your room. James. I wish you'd been there. <laughs> he was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <James. laughs>